Hi, and welcome to this week's Business Finance Bulletin, episode 96. Hi, and welcome again to this week's Business Finance Bulletin with me, Rob Warlow, from Business Loan Services. In this week's episode, um, news of a new service being launched by Aldermore Bank, a look at a survey carried out by the CBI focusing on business confidence and output levels among small businesses, and also a peek at latest figures from the Bank of England about lending to small businesses. And in my Business Finance Tip of the Week, I look at one element of writing a business plan, which is the executive summary. The purpose of the summary is just to get the reader in a mindset of what's to come. It's just a condensed version of the 20, 30 pages that may follow. So let's start this week's bulletin by looking at a new service being launched by Aldermore Bank. Now, Aldermore have realised that there's one industry sector that suffers a lot from cash flow problems, and that's recruitment firms. Now, many recruitment firms um, do use invoice discounting facilities very successfully. But there's also a sub-business within that industry of temporary recruitment agencies. And they have a big dual problem about the amount of paperwork that these guys have to process in terms of timesheets, you're paying employees, invoicing. There's a lot that goes on, and they're linked in with that poor cash flow. So, Aldermore have just now launched a new service um, called Pay and Bill Finance. So, how does it work? Well, Mazars, um, they've partnered up with, will now go in and do all the back office paperwork, help with the timesheets and the payments, etc. So, when Mazars issue the invoice, they will then hand that over to Aldermore, and Aldermore will then advance up to 100% face value of that invoice, less any HMRC deductions. And then when the bill is due, they'll hand over any difference. So it's a great way for temporary recruitment agencies to grow fastly and efficiently with back office support and also media access to finance. So if you want to know more about how that facility could work for you, all you have to do, just go along to Aldermore's website and look for the, for the new product of the pay and bill finance and you'll see a lot more information about it there. A great way to help recruitment agencies grow. In the previous Business Finance Bulletin, episode 95, I took a look at some surveys around business confidence generally, and I passed a message on that there does seem to be a slip in business confidence here in the UK recently, and particularly business owners that we've been speaking to over the last couple of weeks does kind of back this up. Well, there's another survey out today from the CBI, the SME Trends um, Survey, and they've gone out and spoken to about 400 small businesses about where they are today and how they see the future. And this further confirms that confidence levels are taking a bit of a dip. Overall, of the businesses surveyed, 38% of them are saying that they have seen a dip in the total number of orders that they're taking. So how does that split out? Well, for those concentrating on the domestic market, 36% of them have seen a decrease in orders. And for the export market, 46% of them have also seen a decrease in the number of orders they're taking. And their business optimism or confidence levels going forward have not been as strong. So clearly the market's getting a bit tough out there. And so what's the message here? Well, yes, it is tough. Make sure you pick and choose where you do the business, concentrate on your very good clients, but you know, don't necessarily nick to and listen to all the naysayers. Get out there and look for new business because it is there and it may be that one of your biggest competitors is not providing the level of service that they should and you're able to get in there and pick it up. So whilst the confidence levels are falling, don't necessarily think that it would affect you. Have that positive mindset and get out there and look for those opportunities to quote for new business. Moving on now to bank lending. During the time when we're out there in the marketplace looking for finance for businesses, it's been very clear that banks are starting to get back into the game. There's clear evidence that that is beginning to happen. And the latest figures from the Bank of England, um, as of the September 2015, do back this up. Now, the latest figures look at the amount of money that is currently being lent to small businesses out there. And during the month of September, UK SMEs benefited by new loans totalling £4.7 billion. Now, it's great to see that level of activity, and it is slowly creeping up month by month. But more importantly, what we really need to be looking at is the net lending figure. Now, the net is the amount of new loans given out in a month 
minus what's been repaid. And then you just see how the overall stock has advanced in that previous month. Well, in September, say £4.7 billion of new loans were given out and £4.4 billion of loans were repaid. So there was a net increase of about £300 million. Now, you may think, wow, that's not exactly a large amount of money. But I'll tell you what, it, it is really compared to previous months and previous quarters because that increase is really just starting to cement something that we've seen over the last couple of months of being a surplus of monies lent out versus what's being repaid every month. So businesses are now beginning to borrow more than they are paying back. And that's a really good sign. So of course the message from here is do not assume that your bank is going to say no. Get your business plan ready, put all your accounts together in your financial forecast and go knocking on the door. If you want some help with that, don't forget of course we can assist there. Just drop us an email info at businessloanservices.co.uk. So remember, don't assume you'll get a no. You may be surprised. On now to the business finance tip of the week. And here I've got a clip from an interview that I did. I'm looking at business plans. And in this part of the interview, I've got a clip where I look at the executive summary, why you need to start a business plan with the summary. So let's go to that clip now. So if we go into a bit more detail then about what the plan would look like, first things to start with would be the executive summary. Right. You start with summary. And why would you start with a summary? Because usually a summary is at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a bit, a bit strange. The reason we have a summary at the, at the beginning is a couple of reasons, and it's really written in that sense for the bank manager's perspective. If you think about it, the bank manager is going to have a stack of business plans sitting around him, mm. okay? Um, and he may pick up your business plan on the Monday morning and have a quick flick through, but he doesn't have time to look at it then, so he has to put it away. Um, come the Wednesday, he's got a bit more time, and he said, well, I remember flicking through that plan. What was it about? I can't really remember. So if you did this executive summary, it's really an overview of the whole plan put down into one or two pages. Okay. So it means on the Monday morning, you could just read the summary, mm. get a feel for it. That's fine. Okay. Come back to it Wednesday, quickly read the summary. Oh, yeah, I get I remember this one. Yeah. So straight into, into, the, into the mind frame. The other reason why you would put the summary in the beginning is that, um, as we'll discover later, there are banks that like certain sectors, industry sectors, and some banks don't like certain sectors. So... If he's picking up the summary, you can immediately look and say, ah, oh, this is not for us. Right. We're not in particularly into this sector at the moment. So he's not had to sit down for one hour to go yes. through a whole document. Then, oh, right, if I'd known that at the beginning, then I could have saved myself time. Yeah. So that's another reason why you put a summary at the beginning. Another reason as well, you alluded earlier about the um, bank managers have to go to a higher level sometimes mm. to get approval. There are some bank managers who will have um, what's called lending discretions themselves. They can go up to a certain limit. So if you're uh, included in your summary is, I want £100,000, then the manager picking up knows immediately when he sees that oh, I can do this myself. Mm. I don't have to refer it on to anybody else. Right. So it really, the, the purpose of the summary is just to get the reader in a mindset of what's to come. It's just a condensed version of the 20, 30 pages that may follow. So there we are. Get the summary done first because it's what the bank reads. Now, that interview is part of a longer one that I did, and you can get a podcast version of that. All you have to do, go into your favorite search engine, type in how to write an effective business plan, Rob Warlow, and that will take you, um, the first entry should be uh, direct to the page where you can download that podcast. Um, it's also available on our SoundCloud page as well. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the bulletin. And please, as ever, if you did enjoy it, please share it and give it a like amongst your friends. And as always, don't forget there is a podcast version of this available on our SoundCloud and iTunes page. All you have to do is search for Business Finance Bulletin. That's it for this week. Thank you very much for being with me. I look forward to being with you again next Friday. Until then, have a great, successful and profitable week. Bye-bye now.